potential live life your way and tonight is tuesday evening and i am ready to roll <laughs> so for me it's tuesday evening and as i always say it is my favorite day of the week my life doesn't exist about tuesday which last week i was not very well and neither was my client actually my um guest that was coming on the show um but today I'm back. It's Tuesday evening and I'm really excited to be here. Why? Because it's my show and I get to have wonderful guests on and feel my curiosity and hope tap into your curiosity about what's possible and how people fulfill on their dreams, change courses of their life. You know, like many of us, we go to school to learn one thing, but we got introduced to something completely different. And that is a new journey in our lives. And, you know, one of the things that I want about my show is I want people know to know that life is not static, right? You can literally go to school to learn to, like I had a, um, a, a guest on the show who had went to school to become a doctor. And she actually um, did not finish medical school, but went into becoming a fashion designer using recyclable products, right? Like plastic bottles to make clothes and stuff like that. So you don't have to stay stuck in any area of life where you don't want to stay. And you always have to look at life as you're always growing and shifting. And that's what's so exciting about life for me. So tonight I have um, Gianni Kuji. Yes. Is that right? Did I yes, say it right? Why you say it right? Gianni, you have to come closer to the mic. So Gianni Kuji on the on, on the show, and I'm excited to have her. So I just want to give you a little bit, bit of background how I met Gianni. So we both have a mutual friend, um, Fedra. 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 Right. Yeah. I have to say it correctly because I, I don't think in all the time that I've known her, I've said her name correctly, and she's she's always correcting me, which you know it's one of my bad habits, I guess. And um, so um, Phaedra had this wonderful dinner party and she had all her fashion friends and also her um, artistic, creative um, filmmaker friends there at her house. And, and she cooked all this wonderful food and we just had a ball, right? We, we had, had a feast and we had a ball. Absolute feast. And, you know, it's what's so great about um, um, Gianni and the guests is like you can walk down the street and they're just like any other normal human being but when you actually stop and get an opportunity to talk to these people you find out that they're up to some really fun stuff and they're creating their lives in ways that represent who they are and what they're about and gianni has did you bring any magazines no well she has this amazing magazine that comes out like a couple times a year, if you, like twice a year. Twice a year. Yeah. It's pretty thick. It's highly fashionable, highly cur curated, and it's also beautiful. So without further ado, I want to bring Gianni to the microphone and to the show and welcome her. Thank you for coming, really. Thanks for inviting me, Nora. I really, really appreciate it. I'm really happy to be here. Oh, great. I'm not, and I know she's exhausted. She's been working all day. Yeah, but you know, the life has to go on, right? Exactly. The show has to go on. So, um, Gianni, tell us a little bit about yourself. And how, first of all, I want to know your background. Where are you from? You have this amazing accent. So I'm going to say you're probably from one of the French colonies. Am I right? I am. I'm from the French island from uh, called Martinique, uh -huh. French uh, West, West Indies. Uh -huh. Martinique, beautiful island. And you also live, I mean, most... Uh, People from the colonies, my parents are from Jamaica, which is, was a colony, and we went to England. So you went to, to Paris. To Paris. Yeah. I love Paris. You went to Paris. And so where did you stop in America at any time? Or you went I came to actually, uh, I came my first, when I was 17 years old, mm -hmm. I came to New York. It was my first summer did in the US. Did you come by yourself? Yes. Me too. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> okay. See, we were advanced. Okay. So you, you and you lived in Paris. I live in Paris uh, for a few years, then I moved to London in the mid nineties. Right. And I lived in London for fifteen years. How was London? How was London? Oh, it was amazing. It was a great time to be in London. I think I arrived at the right time. Uh -huh. 
you know, thing was booming and, uh -huh. you know, new, new energy. Right. Yeah. So you were originally an accountant. I was act actually studied to be an accountant. Uh -huh. I didn't get my final degree. Uh -huh. But, um, yeah, I did study to be an accountant for almost three years. Uh -huh. And it's not a job. I wanted to be a dancer mm -hmm. originally. Mm -hmm. And my mom wasn't having it. She's like, this is not a job. Right. You have to get a proper job. Right. You know, you know Caribbean yes. parents, you know. Well, no, fortunately, I didn't have those kind of parents. <laughs> you have to. I was feral. I was like a feral cat, just doing my own life. Yeah, I have to be a doctor, a lawyer, or a nurse, or, you know, you have to have, like, what do they call, like, a steady and a secure job. Right. And a dancer wasn't, wasn't one of them. Well, my, uh, fortunately for me, my father, and oh, poor daddy, was ignorant. He couldn't read or write. So his, his concept of a of a stable job was get a job, get a treated. <laughs> right? So, and I had no idea. So my best bet was, I'm going to be a secretary. Yeah, I want to be a secretary. So that's what I did. But I think at the time that would have been considered like a very, you know, right. a it very was, good job. It was a respectful job. A very respectful a job, secretary. yeah. Yes. So basically, yeah, I was studied to be an accountant and, um, I used to go out a lot at the time. I started to be a club kid very early in uh -huh. my age. What was your favorite music? Um, I had very eclectic taste. I mean, funk, classical, rock, house music, techno, right. you know, hip All hop. Cause, and because like you were in the beginnings of hip hop, so as was I. So, it, but I think, so was it really about the, was it about the music and the fashion or was it about the fashion and the music? When I started, it was mainly because I didn't have that interest in fashion. Uh -huh. So it was mainly about the music, for, the music came first, right. I would say. Yeah. And then like, how did you, uh, so the music came first, how did you get into fashion? Tell us so I was going out a lot and uh, I had this friend of mine, yeah, his name is Fifi, he was mm -hmm. a model at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had um, this friend of his called Marielle, Marielle mm -hmm. Robot. Mm -hmm. And um, he introduced me to her and we start, you know, talking. And I asked her what she was doing mm -hmm. and she told me that she was a stylist. And when she says stylist for me, she was like a designer. Right. And she said, no, no, I'm not a, a designer. I'm a fashion, st I'm a fashion editor, actually. Right. That is called. What's the difference? The different fashion editors are people who style for magazines. Okay. Fashion stylists, uh, it's, you know, you style celebrity advertising, right. but uh, fashion editor, it's uh, for magazine. Okay. So she was telling me that she was traveling the world. She was going to Tahiti, to the Maldives, to Seychelles, all those amazing locations. Right. And going to work a little bit there. Closer. Can you hear? Okay. Are we okay with the mic? Okay, go ahead. And she was going there to work for like maybe like two or three weeks at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that sounds like a very cool job. Right. Right. But she didn't explain the amount of work. You know, it was just like me. I was seeing the beauty of it, like, you know, going on the plane and going to those amazing location mm -hmm. and shoot and come back. And, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I'm like, oh, that's cool. It sounds sexy. Yeah, it sounds very sexy. And uh, so I didn't see her for about a year or two. And one day I was like, you know, I decided, I, that's how I realized I, I was never going to be an accountant. I'm right. like, there is no way. This is so what did your mother happen. say when you said, ah, this is not going to happen? She said, you're on your own. Oh, and what did that actually mean? That means that if you want to be a stylist, you're going to have to earn your own money. You're going right. to have to pay your own rent. Uh -huh. So you're on your own. So do, so do you, were you living at home at the time? I was still living at my mom's house. Okay. Yeah. And so did she tell you you had to move? She didn't tell me I have to move, but I can of, yeah, it was, uh, she didn't say I'm not to carrying me, you. but it's like, you're not going to be, yeah. You're not going to live it off of my dime. No, no. All right. So I move out uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, I was, you know, party a lot and uh, doing, you know, bits and bits. I, you know, I was a nanny, I was a waitress, I was, uh -huh. you know, all this, you know, uh -huh. trying to make ends meet. And one day I was, you know, I bought that magazine and I was going through the magazine. And I saw that name and I'm like, oh, that name looks familiar. And it was Mariel's name. Right. And it was a couple of years down 
the railroad, she became the fashion director of this uh, famous French magazine called Femme. Right. So I think I've seen it. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna give her a call. I'm not sure she's going to, you know, remember. Right. It was at the time, you know, it was very easy. You could call people. That's when you call people, and they will take you. You know, they will pick up the phone. Right. So I call, and uh, this woman asked me where I was. I, you know, asked my name and spoke to Marielle. I mean, I don't know if you remember me, but we met for my friend Fifi a few years. And she said, of course, I remember you. I'm like, listen, I'm looking for a job. And she said, like, listen, I don't have, you know, a paid job for you, but if you want to do an internship, you can start. And she and I said, when? And she's like, tomorrow. Oh, cool. So. I was, uh, so I went there and um, start, you know, grabbing, you know, the stairs, mm -hmm. slowly by slowly. I was first in charge of um, returning the clothes from shoots. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, this, yeah, it wasn't the most glamorous job. So returning the clothes from, yeah, so, returning the clothes from the shoot. So like, so I just so, want to like say, so people gave you clothes to shoot. No, basically you have, at the time you have uh, four or five fashion editor was working for the magazine. Mm -hmm. So sometimes some of them will shoot at the same time. Right. So I had this room full of clothes and I was basically the one who organized all the return, the, right. the clothes return to the PR office. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so it was like a very... Five, so five fashion editors, like how many clothes are you talking about? We're talking about between 10 and 20 rack of clothes. I'm thinking, I thought he was going to say 10 or 20 pieces. It was a huge task. It was a very tedious job. You have to be very focused and, yeah. So you had to get, and how many um, a PR people did you have to get those clothes back to? Just roughly. Roughly, maybe 100. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And that's probably like the minimum, maybe more, yeah. And that was over a course of how many days or? <laughs> uh, uh, days, I would, it would take me, sometimes it would take me maybe two weeks to do the job, yeah. So the clothes never dwindled down, there was just always more additional clothes coming along as you were going Yeah, along. and you know, they just come back from shoot, they, so they all pack in suitcase, so you have to open the suitcase, put them on the rack and put them in order. So at the same time, it was good because it helped me a lot to organize, to be organized. Right. Yeah. And that helped for the future. For the future. But yeah. did you know that at the time that it was going to help for the future? No, I didn't. Okay, great. So we're going to hold that and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you stuck in a rut? Negative thoughts, feelings, and conversations got you down? Hi, I'm Noreen Sumter, the Potentiator. Tune in every Tuesday at 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time and listen for new ideas on my show, Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. And we're back on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And I'm speaking to Gianni Cucci. 
Hello. Did I say it right? Yes. Oh, thank did. God. Oh, thank God. I just get so nervous. And um, we're talking, she's actually demystifying the glamour of fashion for me, be, uh, or fashion magazines, which a hundred pieces of clothing, constantly getting more and more clothing, having to like return them. And this is the first two years of her career as the first couple of weeks, she was very fortunate. She was an apprentice. And then how long did you apprentice for? Apprentice for... Roughly. Maybe six weeks, I would say. Six weeks. And I got the paid job, oh yeah, for six weeks after. Right. And I did it for almost three years. Almost three years. So in those three years, what did you learn? And if you, like, if a person that wanted to step into the world of fashion was listening to this show, what did you learn? <laughs> I learned that fashion wasn't all about glam. <laughs> right. <laughs> fashion is painful. It's labor. <laughs> it's labor intensive. Right. right. And but what kept you there? I just I think I was lucky because that woman really took me, Maria, she really took me under her wing. Mm -hmm. Cause after I did like I was in charge of returning the clothes, a uh, main assistant was leaving. Mm -hmm. So she offered me the So your main assistant got knocked up. The <laughs> job of being becoming a first assistant. Right. And you know. Oh, so you, so this lady, you became the first assistant and then you got your, you got like a, an so got, it's all, almost like a promotion. Right. So, so you get to return, to be in charge of returning the clothes uh -huh. and you get promoted to become the first assistant of the fashion director. Uh -huh. And was that like a big shot job? Was that like, you know? Well, that was a big shot, but that was even more, more pressure too. Ah, uh -huh. so tell us a little bit about, about that. That pressure of that because you get to i mean you basically running um how do you say a schedule mm -hmm. and uh, she was also she had the magazine job she was mm -hmm. the fashion director but she also was freelancing from for other jobs for mm -hmm. example she was shooting advertising campaigns mm -hmm. she was styling fashion shows mm -hmm. so wherever she was going i will go with her i will assist her so did you get some of those travel perks did you get to go? I to the did. Station? You know the travel perks I really liked. It was my favorite when I used to work at the magazine. It was, uh, I think, a week or two weeks before Christmas. Uh -huh. The beauty director would call all of us in the room, and we could choose whatever you know skincare product or makeup that right. we wanted. I saw your I saw your massive list of things that you can't do without. Your make your 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 skincare product. My skincare, yeah, that's it's like this me. long, <laughs> it's literally this long, <laughs> shamelessly this long. So that was yeah, that was the and the, also the the PR used you know some of the PR you became friends with them and uh -huh. they you know they give you free clothes or uh -huh. you know gifts and stuff. So that was that was, that was really good good yeah right good stuff. So I, I want to talk about just a little history of like fashion. So what the changes are like, so who would you say are more fashionable, the Europeans or the Americans? Europeans. Who do you say has more freedom in fashion, um, freedom of fashion, freedom of self-expression in fashion, Europeans or? I would say the English people. English people. Yes. And definitely. tell me a little bit about that. Um, what, in your opinion. I mean, I, I would, think I would it, beg to agree, but you know. I think English people always been, you know, for me, they always been like the. I'm talking about in general. Mm -hmm. they, it's like they have this attitude, like the, you know, they can't be bothered. Basically, what right. people think, you know, if they want to go naked on the street, they will go naked on the right. street, and I admire, admire that. I mean, anyone. And the, the, you know, there's there's great designer in in England, you know, right. and a lot of you know the fashion inspiration came from England. Right. So you'd say, would you say that the British are they have that stiff upper lip, right? Yeah. But when it comes to their, well, their way of dress or their self expression, it's very freeing. Very freeing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. More than, I think they're less uptight than the French and the Italians. Right. For sure. You know, I, when I first came to the United States, you know, it was like early 80s. 
I was wearing vinyl, I was wearing rubber, I was wearing all these weird clothes. My, my skirts were like 12 inches long. I called them snatch proof, right, or snatch length, right? And, um, you know, I thought Americans were supposed to be like, you know, these people that run the world. And everybody was like really sort of like dressed tightly. Nobody had any, there was no differences. Everybody mm. kind of looked the same. And Almost like robots, yeah. yes. It's still the same in, with the fashion, but we spend an inordinate amount of money on clothes, wouldn't you say, in America? Oh, a lot. Would you say they spend, in America, they spend more money on clothes and style than they do in Europe? I think they spend different. Mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit how different. I is. think in Europe, um, people are probably less, I mean, now the, it's changed, but before when I started in fashion, they are probably have this, they didn't have this robotic attitude that mm -hmm. they have here. Because when I first came to New York in 84, mm -hmm. I wasn't working in fashion yet. But I already noticed that people like wear the same clothes. Mm -hmm. It was I, just for success, 1980s, yeah, dress, yeah. big, big shoulder pads. Big shoulder pads. You know, button down, those little kind of rosettes that they wore on the neck. Yes, I was victim to that too. Because I was in America. It was the American way to go, you know? So. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, okay. So, uh, tell me, like, I want to go now into your magazine, which I'm so sorry that you didn't bring it, but what's, what's the magazine? It's called Ubiquist. Ubiquist. Ah, you, oh, I said it right. Yes. Ubiquist. Yes. So, what was the inspiration for your magazine? At the time, the inspiration was that I didn't see, I mean, now I think it's, I guess it changed over the years, but I didn't see a magazine who was like um, multicultural. Right. When I say multicultural, I, I, I'm talking in terms of ethnicity, right. music, right. film, right. art, like you didn't have, you didn't see like people of colors. Right representing in my, you will probably see like maybe once once in a while right but it wasn't constant right it wasn't like a regular thing well uh, it was only benetton i the first the united colors of benetton, benetton which was which was you like saw that one black the most girl. iconic campaign of the, the, the 80s girls with the round face or in the short hair that was it for me like and maybe occasional boy or something like benetton, that. benetton yeah was the first one yeah. of the first one to, right. to start yeah and so, yeah, because your magazine, your magazine is pretty amazing. Thank you. Like it has beautiful art. It has, you know, really creative people. You don't do mainstream per se, mainstream people. It's mostly for me, the people that are a little bit underground. -y, yeah, well we're trying popular. to mix. I mean, we, we do have sometimes people, you know, mainstream people, but I think it's nice to have the balance, like, and also to help, you know, promote. young and, and promote, you know, right. young people who, probably wouldn't have had that platform. Right. So it's nice to have both. What does it take to actually create that magazine for you? It takes a lot of time of energy right. and anxiety and stress, uh -huh. but it's a labor of love and it's a passion, so. And that's what keeps you going? Yes. And how do you find your people? How do you, whoopsie, I'll leave it. How do you find, you know, how, how do you put your magazine together? Like, where does it all come from? You put, first of all, I've got to say I've got an amazing team. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be able to do the magazine without them for sure. Right. Because, you know, it's nice, it's great to have an idea. But if you don't have anyone, you know, it's like, um, how do you call it? A chef d'orchestre. Like uh, the guy, a, chef, uh, a chef, chef d'orchestre is someone who conducts the music. Oh, 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 um, oh, oh, oh a conductor. A, a conductor. Uh, orchestra, uh, orchestra conductor. Oh, God. Yes. So, you can be a very good orchestra conductor, but if you don't have your musician with right. you, it's it's pretty much the same with a magazine. Right. And so, how do you how do you distinguish? You do two magazines a year. Yeah, we buy annual. Yeah, it's, right. it's already a lot of work. I don't know how, how I don't know how people can do a, a monthly magazine. Honestly, um, you know, respect right. a lot of respect. So you do two magazines per year. So when do you start actually working? So it's six months a piece, right? Six months a piece, yeah. And when do you actually start working on each magazine? I don't, I don't really have time off to tell you the truth because the minute one is released, this 
because I don't have the structure of a big corporation. I, right. I'm not Condé Nast. Right. I'm not, you know, Earth. I don't have this big, you know, big money behind me. Mm -hmm. It's all almost like it's homemade. Grassroots. Yeah. So but it doesn't. I don't you know, have. You say I don't homemade. Mean, she says homemade, but truthfully. It is beautiful. It is, there's nothing homemade it about that. It is homemade. Name. It is. No, homemade. I got that. But yeah. it's beautiful. Thank you. The quality of paper. Try. You know the way it's put together. The the art. It's just amazing. Yeah, that's mean. I mean, there's something. What's the name? She said, which is I think it's really it made me laugh at the time. But I think she was very right. It's a uh, it's uh -huh. She says there is a, there is a lot of creativity in brokenness. <laughs> and I think she's them right when yes. she say that. There is a lot of because you have there. to compete with other people who have so much more money than you. Right. So it may give you like even more, you know, you're more driven. I think. Right. Right. Wow. So so tell me the layout. How do you kind of lay it out for somebody here? Somebody here. I, for for um, okay. Thank you. So for somebody that was looking to do a magazine. How how do you lay it out? How do you get the people? Did, are you now got to the point where people come to you, or uh, you're still going to people? I still have to go to people because we're not like a mainstream. But some people, I mean, there is both. The the thing I knew who I wanted to work with, mm -hmm. so I had a pretty clear idea who I wanted to work with. I didn't know if they were going to say yes, but I was happy that the ninety nine percent of the people I wanted. And so, what did Agreed. you have to? What did you do? You have time. What did you have to overcome in yourself to actually reach out and make the request? My shyness. Thing? Okay. So because you, I don't like to ask favor, uh -huh. and I have to come over that. You had to overcome that. Yeah. So we're going to take a break there, and we'll be right back. You are listening to the Talking Alternative Network. <laughs> Do you love or are you intrigued about New York City and its neighborhoods? I'm Jeff Goodman, host of Rediscovering New York, a weekly show that showcases New York's history and its extraordinary neighborhoods. Every Tuesday live at 7 p.m., we focus on a particular neighborhood and explore its history, its vibe, its feel, and its energy. Tune in live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. The best designs for your life start at home. I'm David Thiergartner, interior designer and host of At Home. Listen live Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time as we talk to the very best professionals about interior design and the design that's all around us right here on talkradio.nyc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Jewelry. Yeah. I love jewelry. And we are back on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And we're talking about fashion, fashion magazine, passion, hard work, hard grafting. It's not as glamorous as we see no. in the actual final product. It's a labor of love. It's sweat. I'm sure there's some blood there. There's sweat, there's tears, there's a little bit of blood. <laughs> <laughs> For the drama, <laughs> but it wouldn't be fashion. <laughs> but no one get murdered. Oh, right. so that's good. At least yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> so, um, one of the things that you mentioned was you hate asking for the things that you need. But like, how long have you been running the magazine now? Uh, in October, it's going to be four years. Wow. So, did the four years come quickly, or was it slow? I think it came quickly so that's because what two, feel like two yesterday. four six eight so there's eight copies of your magazine eight copies, yeah. of your magazine out there there are actually nine copies because there was an issue zero but was never like put on sale it was just like a test issue mm -hmm. but yeah 
officially, yeah, we already did like nine nine issues. Right. But eight for the public. So who are you today that you weren't those four years ago? How have you grown? Oh, yes, very quickly. <laughs> yeah. I learned a lot. I learned that, uh, first of all, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Right. I knew it would be difficult, for sure, but I didn't know it would be that difficult. Uh -huh. Because the main thing for a magazine to function is to get advertisers, mm -hmm. and that it's been a real struggle. Do you have advertisers now, or a few? A few, but some of the labels, they still, like, you know, very, like, big label, like Gucci or Valentino, they still refuse to run close to the magazine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's this label, some label, you want them to advertise because, you know, they can, you know, they have the money mm -hmm. and, you know, they can bring, you know. But, you know, I'm not going to give up because, you know, Vuitton or Valentino or Prada is not going to advertise them in the magazine. There is, I'm sure there is other labels less famous who you know right it's a work in progress so let's talk about the artists that are in your magazine so what how do you choose the art I do a lot of research um, actually mainly on Instagram right. I found a lot of I found a lot of them on Instagram and Facebook and also word of mouth like friends who like find oh this one would be amazing for your magazine right. or you know so my oh check this link that person I think will be good for your magazine. Right. So it's a it's a mixture yeah of my research and other friends or you know. So I'm gonna say that hearing that from you tells me you have a really good eye. How do you have you developed that eye or is it like hot? It's from the art yeah. It's not so I think it's yeah it's something in me I I don't know how to explain it. Right yeah. And so, like the years of grafting, putting those clothes together, how has that helped you in curating and putting things together? And did it help you to become more detailed? Yeah, and you, it's also helped you to edit, you mm -hmm. know, to, because, you know, when you do a magazine, and because we do like 228 pages, mm -hmm. which is a lot. 200, and what's the average, what's the average magazine, what pages? Without advertising, yeah. probably less. <laughs> well, it's a lot less. Probably like what twenty. Because some of them, they have, they probably have like as much advertising as le and less content. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but you have um, a lot of art, a lot of fashion. A we lot have of art, fashion, film, music, uh, sometimes design. We also talk a lot. You have articles about uh, social issues mm -hmm. and you know. And most of the artists actually we made feature they like very like people who who speak you know who, right. who, who engage into like you know either a social cause or you know so if you could have anybody in your magazine other than the advertisers right we will yeah. get to that but if you could have anybody in your magazine who would you like to have apart from me <laughs> okay if I could have anybody in my magazine. Uh -huh. I would love to have Cecily Tyson. Oh, okay, Cecily Tyson. Yes. Why Cecily Tyson? Because she's a, for me she's an icon, mm -hmm. and um, she's a woman of a certain age now. Mm -hmm. And what um, is she? Is she near ninety or? She's already. I think she's in her early nineties. Wow. Yeah. So that's why I would, I would love right to have her. So if there's anybody out there that's connected, you know, they say three degrees of separation. There's anybody out there that. Knows Cicely Tyson or knows a granddaughter or a yes. grandson, or and that goes for you guys over here. If you know, it, if anybody knows Cicely Tyson, you know, she would love to have her in the magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do, I'm gonna ask for her. <laughs> so, um, so Cicely Tyson, who else? Let's do one man, one woman. Okay, so Cicely Tyson, the man will be, I mean, I already had one that. I was dying to have Melvin Van Peebles. Oh, yeah. He was in issue six. So the other one actually is dead. <laughs> I was going to get to that one, but, you know. <laughs> it would, would have been Nelson Mandela. Okay. Yeah. But what about um, Sidney Poitier or Sydney Poitier somebody? Is a good what's one? the other guy? Um, Dale. Dale. Harry Belafonte. Harry Belafonte. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
Because yeah. I can see them in I your... I will be front I can see them in your magazine. Because they're kind of... They're very iconic, you know, and they're still very current. And they're also... And they're we have... Uh, actually, we had we did have the Jesse Williams in uh, issue seven. Who's Jesse Williams? Do I not the know? The activist, the actor, is playing in that TV series. I don't watch TV. Um, yeah. Oh, you don't watch ah, TV? Okay. No. Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy, uh, sorry. Yes. Grey's so Anatomy. if you, okay, so if you could have somebody who is dead come back and be in your magazine. Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela, yeah. okay. Who else? Woman now. Woman to bring back from the dead. Uh, I was, maybe Dorothy Dandridge would be I was the just one. thinking the same. I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. Dorothy Dandridge. Yeah. Yeah, I think she will have very interesting stuff to say about Hollywood. What about all the new, young, millennial type? And you know what? Oh, yeah, another one. Josephine Baker would have been a good one. Who? Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker. Yeah. Absolutely. And I know you love Zora Neale Hurston. Oh, I love her. She's one of my favorite writers. Right. And what about the Harlem Renaissance type? Oh, all of them. All of them. <laughs> right. Langston Hughes. I mean, all of them. Yeah, because your magazine gives me that vibe. Right, it, it, you know, like your magazine, like 20, 30 years from now, it will be sort of like an iconic type magazine that was very sort of a, not, not like high fashion, not low fashion, but like create really creative yeah. and really um, just not, not like mainstream or commercial fashion, like a whole different world, like just. It's, it's almost like there's a square, but you're not a square. You're like a square that's... We're almost like a square, but we're not a square. Yeah, exactly. You're not a square. You'll never be a square. Or you're a square that's kind of slightly off. You know, like that kind of thing. That's how I, I, I see your fashion magazine. Um, so what is, it that, um, what is it that you ultimately want to happen to the magazine? Because some people build up things and to sell it. Yes. Or what do you want to happen? Uh, I would like to have investors mm -hmm. and uh, advertisers. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of people are looking for, advertisers and, in, and investors, investors and stuff like that. So, like, if, if an advertiser and an investor was listening to this show right now, what would you, what would you say to them? Let's talk. Okay. And what are we going to talk about? Let's talk... Um, you know, about the magazine, mm -hmm. how they can help and hope they don't want to disturb what we're doing and change the whole concept. Of right, the, you want to keep the concept as the concept. Yeah, I mean, I'm open to suggestion, but I wouldn't want someone to come and just change. You know, I met that person actually about two years ago. Uh -huh. And she, that woman, she was um, interested. She had some interest. Mm -hmm. To invest in the magazine mm -hmm. and the first thing she said to me she said she wanted to fire all my writers all my teams and right. i'm like why she said oh i just want to bring new people right and i say can you tell me which people she said oh i'm going to find them oh so she didn't really have she didn't any, really I mean, i'm like she just I, wanted to it was yeah. just was it more like control yeah i think it was a control thing right and i'm like this is not gonna work so you really have to be careful i mean it's nice to find an investor but you have you to want to be, hands off. You have to be careful who you associate yourself. Right. Yeah. You don't want to sign a contract with the devil <laughs> because that's going to be. He might want to be, 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 be on the front cover <laughs> without you knowing it. Exactly. It's like, mm. <laughs> so, um, you know, so what do you want for your life? Me, I want a pretty simple life. I want to go back to the West Indies and just be on the beach, have a shack, and you know, open maybe a restaurant like you twice, will never have twice a, a week, and that's it. You will never have a shack. You, there's just too much beauty in your life. But that's how I see my life. I'm, you know, I'm getting old, but I, I could, I could carry on doing the magazine from there. Right. But maybe you know, help some new kids, and you know. And just be like a mentor. Right. So that's what you'd like to do. Yeah. Being so you're, a mentor. You're, for you to have a restaurant that only opens two days a week in the Caribbean, you know it's got to be like a happening spot. Yeah. It's like we don't it's even going know. To be it the has, it's going to be a happening spot because it's got to be something like, 
oh, I don't know if she's coming in today. I don't know if we're going to open today. And some people let's keep her in. <laughs> yes. Let's call her. Oh God, I don't know. Maybe I'll just get out of my chaise and come over. Or open the door because you wouldn't be doing the cooking. Somebody else is going to be doing the cooking. Or just some, you know, like an eco lodge or something like a hotel, but you have to be kind of like right eclectic. Eclectic, and yeah. And maybe have like you know, it would be nice. I mean, if of course if I had the money, I had like a residence thing for the young kids, uh -huh. and you know, you become a mentor. You you know, you call a couple of of your friends and uh -huh. say, you know, do you want to come for a residence for two or three weeks helping kids? And I'm sure they will say yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that would be a great thing to do, I think. So, so I'm just going to recap. You came here from? London. London. What, tell me so about So I'm going to be, actually, you know what? I realize I'm going to be an, an official New Yorker in September. Uh, say that again, what? So because apparently when you've been in New York for more than 10 years, uh -huh. you can call yourself a New Yorker. I thought it was seven years. Someone told me 10 years, so maybe it's 7 years. It was 7 years when I got here, maybe inflation. So about this 10 years. So <laughs> I'm going to be in New York officially in September. Well, I'm going to be possibly by the end of the year, between the beginning of the year, I'll be a citizen of the United States. Congratulations. Oh my God, that, that took something. That took something I'm far for me from, to I'm do far, that. I'm far from that. I know, it, it took something for me to do that. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Yeah, that took something. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. I'm the aptly named host of Tony Martinetti Nonprofit Radio, big nonprofit ideas for the other 95%. Fundraising, board relations, social media, my guests and I cover everything that small and mid-sized shops struggle with. If you have big dreams and a small budget, you have a home at Tony Martinetti Nonprofit Radio. Fridays, 1 to 2 Eastern at TalkingAlternative.com. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. TalkingAlternative.com back on beyond potential live life your way and um, you know what I love about you? I, you from the moment I met you there's this like it's like a black velvety like silk velvet just your flow your energy is just so laid back and cool I grew up in the West Indies maybe is that what it is oh no but you know it's uh it's just really easy. Sometimes. Yeah, it, it seems that way. I'm not saying it is, but to me, my, the way I pick up your energy, it seems really easy, really laid back. No, I, have to, no I am a pretty laid back person. Right. Just smooth. Like, you know, it takes something to rattle you. Yeah, but when, <laughs> but when okay, you, when you go rattle, do you go deep? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so tell us about you, Bisque. Ubiquist. Ubiquist. How did you come up with the name? Uh, and what does it mean? Ubiquist came from the word ubiquitous, okay. which was way too long to, for a title. So I wanted something with a twist. Uh -huh. And uh, Ubiquist just Popped came. In. I'm like, oh, Ubiquist? No, Ubiquist. Oh, something with a twist. Right. So Ubiquist. So and it's being 
the meaning of ubiquitous it means being a different place at the same time okay okay i can't see that but i get it being in two places at one time i've tried it it doesn't work <laughs> hurts my back <laughs> so so you so um where can people find it your magazine and so, how, yeah how can people get your magazine so you the best thing is to go on the ubiquis website mm -hmm. it's www.ubiquismag.com or you spell can spell the ubiquis u b i k w i s t okay mag.com m a g m a g.com or you can go on our in instagram page which is the same name ubiquis mag or the facebook page mm -hmm. ubiquis magazine mm -hmm. and ubiquismag.com right and you get all the infos and um if somebody wanted to, uh, is it a subscription magazine? We have subscri subscription on the website. Right. And where can we find it if we wanted it? Because I know I saw it at Newsom. I know, I know your Newsom house. Do you know Newsom? New, New, yeah. Newsom house. Beautiful, beautiful co working space. And your magazine fits in perfectly because they have awesome magazines there. they do they do have a good selection of magazines there right yeah. seen it there definitely and it's one of those ones that like i feel so guilty because i can't steal them <laughs> i feel so guilty they have such great magazines and i want to steal them and i'm just like i can't i can't it's not like a common magazine you feel guilty i feel guilty um so but where else can people find it uh we have i mean the last issue is uh, only came out in digital but you can go if you go to the iTunes, you can actually get the app for free. You can mm. download the Ubiquis magazine app mm -hmm. and you can buy the magazine. And you can also buy it from the other website called uh, pocketmags.com. So it's w www.pocketmags. Pocket. P O C K E T. Yes. Right. Pocket Mags. M A G. M A G S dot com. Right. Go, 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 go so, back. but the easiest, yeah, you go on iTunes, you mm -hmm. download the Ubiquis magazine app, and mm -hmm. uh, you can get your issue. So, is this all digital? Can they get it hard copy? Uh, it's all the, the spring summer issue is all digital. Oh wow! Yes. So you're going digital? Are you ever going to go back to paper? No, we're going to go back to paper for the next one. So, where would they get like if they wanted back copies? Oh, back copies on the website. On we the we, website. Are, we have back copies on the website. So, but yeah. no back copies, hard copy. Uh, yeah, we do. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, All we right, do have cool. a hard yeah. Okay. So, we can, we know, we've got the website, we've got the... And so, what about people who wanted to, you know, put themselves forward and help him maybe find that boy that's going to carry your bag? <laughs> Same thing, all info on the website, or you can just write at info at ubiquismag.com. Right, so if you're looking for, like, so what kind of, if you were looking for an intern or a creative person or somebody that wanted to um, contribute to your magazine, what is, that, what is that thing that you're looking for from that person? I think, first of all, I need to meet the person mm -hmm. because it's very difficult to, I mean, even if the, perf the person can have the most amazing resume, mm -hmm. I still have to meet mm -hmm. me. I go with my guts, energy. energy. Right. So I, I still, yeah. So you look at that stuff, but you need to meet the I person. I need to meet the person face to face. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you're still old, you're old school. I am very old school. You're old school. Maybe okay. too old school. Sometimes. But what's the one thing that your gut is always consistent with that with the, that person? I listen to my instinct. Mm -hmm. If and I would say, so far, it was always be good. It, uh, it has always been good. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there anything that you want me? I usually do this with some people. Is there anything that you want to tell me to ask you, you know, before we end? Is there anything? How's your mother doing with your magazine now and your fashion? Mother, <laughs> still think I'm crazy. <laughs> well, you have to be crazy to go for what you want to do. If you weren't but crazy, I you'd have been an accountant. How she's, I feel somehow she's kind of proud. Mm -hmm. She didn't tell me, but I can see when she talked to her friends about the magazine. Right. right. <laughs> Look what my daughter did. 
And how does that make you feel? Oh, it makes me happy to make her happy. Right. Yeah. And are you proud I of I think work? she would be happy because, you know, we talk about it. I think she, she would be much happier if she sees me in a... She, if I had more financial security, mm -hmm. yeah, she would be happier. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's one of those things, but, like, you have to find... But you know your parents always worried for you. Right, yes. no matter what. Yeah, no exactly. What, so. you, know, you could be 155 and they're still thinking that you're two and, it's you know... True. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I guess with time you learn that. I mean, that. you know, when I spend time with my mom, I still think that I'm like, I'm like, mom, I'm not 15 anymore, I'm not 14 anymore. Right. Yeah, my, my mother wanted to braid my hair. My mother stopped braiding my hair when I was 11, okay? And she's like, can I braid your hair? It's like, touch not this hair. <laughs> touch not. Because you didn't want to do it when I was, you know... Now, uh -uh. she wants to reconnect. I yeah, that's, that's too late, good, babe. That's a good thing. I love it. Reconnect. We can have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> we can drink. We go hang out at the beach and stuff like that, but we can't do that now anyway. But um, it's too late for that. But um, yeah, anything you want me to ask you? Oh, my God. That's a tough one. What it always that? is. Uh... Or is there anything that you want to tell people that they don't know that they don't know? Tell your friends. What? They don't know about me. Uh, Emmanuel said, uh, also, you, you moved to the, to the app. Congrats. Billy. Hey, Billy. Hi, Billy. Hmm? Hey, Billy. Yes, so they've moved to the app. Yeah. So anything. Anything. I mean, I have no idea. Honestly. Are you happy? Are you happy with your choices? I think I am. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I don't, I can't picture myself on a nine to five job. Right. I mean, it's difficult what I'm doing, you know, because you don't have the security. Sometimes you work and sometimes for weeks there is no work and it's, you know, it's like a water coaster. Right. But, you know, I put myself into that, so. But it's a, you, you, it's a part of it. You've, it's, yeah, it is. It's life. Right. It's a part of, and it's your life. It's your my choices. life and my choices. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's yeah, always good, good things and you know bad things, things that don't. I never say bad things. I always no, say there's always the good things, things and things that don't things work. That don't work. Yeah. And then the things that don't work, we make, we change it or get rid of it and create something new. Exactly. And that's the aspect of being creative. And you're the perfect person to have that life that you created for yourself. I guess. <laughs> well, it ain't me. I've got my life. You've got yours, you know. But it's awesome. I mean, like, what are some of the feedback that you've gotten about the magazine from people? I got amazing feedback, right. you know. People, like, you know, they <laughs> really, really like them. I mean, there are some, I was really surprised because I get some really, really hardcore fans. I mean, it's like, yeah. And uh, now we have, you know, it's considering we started, like, four years ago, we have a... Uh, 152 stock is worldwide. Oh, wow. So we're now we sell in Korea, in Japan, in Shanghai, in uh, Lebanon, and all the main uh, European capital. Right. The uh, uh, magazine doing really well here. We have a few cities in the US, so it's good. And I uh, hope it's, you know. It's going it's, it's, it's going the way you want it to go. Yeah. So, it's, it's so um, what I'm hearing from you is that you have organic growth. Yes. Because right. we don't have, I don't have, like I said, I don't have the financial resources to have big advertising mm -hmm. campaign and stuff like, you know, what other magazine does, you know, when they launch an issue or, mm -hmm. or have the big party. And mm -hmm. so I don't have that. So you have to find a way to, to do it, you know. And you're doing it. So high five. I'm I trying. Like I'm trying. No, you're not trying. You're doing it. You're doing it. So we have two more minutes to the end of the show. And first of all, I want to acknowledge you for like fulfilling on your dreams, going beyond your potential, because that's what it is. It's like going beyond our potential, sticking with the thing that we are really passionate about, that we care about, because at the end of our lives, we want to know that we've lived a full life doing oh, the things uh, yeah. that we love. You don't want to lay on your bed going, yeah, well, I, I No, went, because I the last me. thing I want is like, is what, to be an what if? What if? <laughs> That's what, what you would have had if you'd have been an accountant. I would have been miserable. What if? <laughs> <laughs> I would 
miserable. You want to miserable, right? But you're happy. You might not have, but you have everything you want when you. But want you it. know what? Actually, study to be an accountant actually really helped me now. Right. Really, and you know what? Everything come back in self. Exactly. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thank. thank you. Thank you guys for joining her on her Facebook Live. Gianni, it was a pleasure having you on the show. And if you need to reach her, it's www.ubiquismag.com. And this is Noreen Sumter from Noreen Sumter Coach, uh, com. If you <laughs> If you want to talk to me, say hello, um, get your coaching on. I'm the girl to call because I rock the house. My clients are doing really well. Just spoke to a client this week who moved to Chicago and got a promotion of her life. So this is Noreen Tumter signing off from Beyond Potential. Live life your way. See you next week. Bye-bye. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network.